Okay, fisherwomen and fishermen, pay attention to the barometric pressure. I can't stress this enough. I don't know what it is about the barometric pressure. From what I've researched and just found through my own experience of looking at the bar barometric pressure, especially when it drops, what I found is that when the barometric pressure drops like 0.10 to 0.15 or even 0.12 under its normal value, and I know this may sound a little confusing, but let me tell you this. The normal barometric pressure in the Cincinnati kind of valley region, in the, in the Ohio Valley region in Cincinnati, is 30.1, all right? So today, it is, today our barometric pressure is 29.87. Let me just tell you, that is a significant drop in barometric pressure for this area. And you'll typically find that either pre or post storm or some sort of front system moving through. Now, why does that happen? I've talked about this in other videos. That happens because the fish uh, instinctually think that either uh, a storm has just passed or is about to come over. Okay, why does that make them eat? Well, fish have an instinct to feed up uh, either pre or post storm because one, they don't know how long the storm is gonna last. They don't know if their home, their habitat, will be flooded out, so they're going to try to eat as much as they can to ride out the storm. <laughs> or it could be a post-storm pause. Turkeys. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> or it's after a storm and uh, they just know like, okay, finally the waters have subsided and, and the waters are slowing down. Uh, let's eat again. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's not a bad thing to pay attention to your barometric pressure. Does it happen? I mean, does it work that the bite is fire every time? No. It, it obviously depends on how well they've eaten before and, you know, how low or high the water's been and, you know, conditions in general. But partly cloudy days, as everyone should know, are great for fishing, uh, which is what we've got today. And uh, the barometric pressure is, is, is down a bit, so... Let's see if today's gonna be fire. All right, ladies and gents. Let's see what is happening today. Gonna get any first cast love? Okay, casting is not happening right now. Trying to do this wacky backhanded cast. That's the one we wanted. Oh, yep. There we go. That's where we thought they'd be, right? Nice. Smalley hiding just outside the fast moving. Just outside. <laughs> Smalley hiding just outside the fast moving water right there at the roots of that tree. Nicely done. All right. Get you back in the water. There we go. Another little tiny smallie. And he took both hooks. All right, buddy, we got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Nice, bud. All right. Get you back. And he was hanging out right here before the rapids. The little mini waterfall. The rain's starting up and I'm seeing some jumpers here. What that tends to do is knock down uh, some of the mayflies and dragonflies and other bugs into the water. And I don't know how fish see and recognize that through all the raindrops, but they do. I will pre-apologize because I know the video and audio are about to get kind of sloppy. Look at that. He's still on there? He is. Oh, he got snag jobs. Look, he took a swipe at it and missed it. Baby Smalley. See ya! There we go. 
That's not a bad one at all. Ooh, wow, that's a mega rock bass. But man, he is a nice rock bass. Yeah, buddy. Wow. All right. Nice rock bass. That's a decent one. See you later. Let's see if there's anything on the back side of this tree. Oh. There we go. Bright red long ear. Look at how orange he is. Look at that. It's funny too. You take him out of the water and look at instantly how much darker his color gets. So if you ever notice how bright a fish is in the water, and as soon as you take him out and he loses some of his oxygen, they start to lose a little bit of their color. All right, let's see what else we got behind this tree. Oh, took a swipe at it. Another bright orange buddy. Well, here you go. Let's see if there's anything way back in that pocket. Yep. Sure was. Is this a rock bass? Gave up like a rock bass. Yep. Nice. Little rocky, little pudgy rocky. Right, uh, right past the little pocket up against that tree there. Nicely done. All right, buddy. Thank you. Oh, someone's day was a flop. What's the fishing version of your man card? I gotta turn in my fish card. If there's not fish back here, then I am, my certification as a fisherman will be revoked. Not today, folks. Not today. There will be no breaking of poles. There will be no revoking of cards. Oh. That fish was like, let me tell you, bro. There we go. Let's give you a drink. Relax. Okay. He's biting. He's in good health. All right. There we go. Nice smallie. Beautiful. All right. Take off, buddy. You were right where I wanted you to be and where I said you would be. See ya. I'm telling you, these little pockets, these little slow pockets, especially when you see the, the color of the water change a bit, it's fire. It's always going to be fire. Let's see if we can pull more few. Pull a more few? Pull a few more out of that spot. Let's go. All right, let's see what else is back there. Hey. Easy. There we go. Just had to get up on the bank there. Oh, for a for a longy. He's a long-eared long ear. A bright blue and bright orange long ear. Nice. All right, buddy. Oh, there's a spider on me too. Get away. No, I don't want you on me. So I don't know what this thing is with the gigantic antennas. Some sort of cricket? What is that thing? I don't know, but I think I just picked up spiders. Just gonna see if I can fish along this bank and catch anything like that. What did we get? Little tiny long-eared sunfish. Nice. See you, buddy. 
pull anything else off that bank. Hopefully something a little bit more substantial. Nope. Just uh just another one. Another long-eared sunfish. Well, these guys are often confused with pumpkin seed just because of the, you know, the orange and teal coloring, but pumpkin seed will have a spotted dorsal. Though also their uh a percular fin will be much longer. It'll probably extend down to here past their bee hole. And they'll have a white margin, but typically it'll be, they'll, they'll most likely have a, a red dot there at the end of the uh, percular flap. Um, so yeah, that's, those are some of the common, common ways to mistake a, a long-eared sunfish for a pumpkin seed. I can tell by the debris floating down, we are, looks like the water is rising fairly quickly. It is rising fairly quickly because <laughs> they must have opened the floodgate because you guys will notice when I came through there was a little grass island right there. It, uh, it no longer exists. So we're gonna get back across oh, before it gets too deep. Kind of hightail it back to better water. Oh, that's crazy how quickly that came up so fast. Like, you can see the grass where I walked through. is now four inches underwater. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Look how quickly water can rise in the span of, what was that, 30 minutes? So, we were standing here when we found this flip-flop. Yeah, look at this. There was no water on this island and now, and now the water's going through the island. That's crazy how quickly the water can change, especially when you're this close to a, uh, a spillway controlled river. And man, did that change. Man, did that change. I will go and show you guys the spillway here in a second. I'll drive up to the spillway because it's just less than a mile that way. Um, what it looks like when they open the floodgates. But here is the spillway. They're letting some water out. I know it's loud here, but man, where were my sirens? I didn't hear. Well, I think that's where we're gonna call it quits. The rain's starting to pick back up again and we had a decent day before they opened the floodgates. Uh, hopefully it, uh, it stays slack uh, the rest of the week because the rest of the week looks absolutely beautiful for temperature and weather. That heat wave is done. So, see you guys in the next adventure. Peace.